Watch. And joining me now is Deputy District Attorney John McKenney, of course, an outspoken critic of his boss, George Gascon, and a big time supporter of the recall. You were out there on uh, plenty of your weekends gathering those signatures, John. You just heard your colleague, John Hatami, say he's disappointed. How do you categorize how you feel tonight? Well, I'm very disappointed as well. And um, I know a lot of my colleagues feel the same way. And a lot of victims, current and even past victims, have been contacting me throughout the afternoon, letting me know that, that in some cases they're just devastated by the news, that they're not going to get an opportunity to exercise their franchise and vote in a recall election. What do you think went, what went wrong? Because there seemed to be a lot of momentum for this effort. Well, I, you know, I don't think that this is a story about what went wrong entirely. Obviously, the goal was to force an election uh, this fall. Um, but we can talk about a lot of things that went right here. And, and what went right uh, are, among other things, uh, 520,000, more than half a million registered voters in the county of Los Angeles got engaged in a democratic process and they signed a petition to remove a locally elected official from office. That's unprecedented. That's historical. I don't think you'll find another example of 520,000 citizens signing a petition to remove a locally elected official from office anywhere in this nation's history. Uh, and those people are going to remain attentive. They're going to remain engaged. And, uh, you know, there's a future in front of us. And in 2024, those voters, as well as others, will have a, another opportunity to decide who leads this office. Then again, this is the second failed attempt. The first one really didn't gain the traction. This one did. Uh, there are those then who would say that the majority, as Jody Armour said in Gina's report, the majority support D.A. Gascon's reform policies and they're OK with it. Well, hopefully George Gascon doesn't think that because that would be a grave error on his part. Uh, he shouldn't see this as any reason to celebrate at all. What he should see is that half a million registered voters, some of whom just voted for him a year and a half ago, want to remove him from office and replace him for a dereliction of his duty. They want to elect a DA who understands the assignment, who understands that public safety has to be the number one priority. And they want a DA who will hold people accountable and while being compassionate, while being empathetic. They want a DA who is going to recognize victims, uplift and support them. And they don't have that now. They understand that. And unfortunately, uh, a lot more people are going to come to see that that's true in the, in the coming uh, years as we await another opportunity to vote. You mentioned that you heard from victims' families today disappointed in this as well. You released a statement earlier. You basically said that you were going to keep the pressure on Gascon. He is in office through December of 2024. What does that mean? How, what does that look like in terms of keeping the pressure on him? Well, what it looks like from my point of view is that, you know, I work in the office and I go to work every day. Uh, I see myself as a people's prosecutor. I've been there since 1998. Mr. Gascon is, is just, you know, another DA that I've worked for, but I go to work every day, stand up in court and announce that I'm there for the people. And what that means is I'll be watching. I'll be watching uh, how these policies are applied. And when they're not uh, leading to good outcomes, I'll let the public know about it through my many social media platforms. I'm, I'm not going to shy away. I'm not going to disappear for two years and then pop back up two years from now. I will stay on this the way I have been over the last year and a half. People can count on that. The last time, John, you were on our air, July the 6th, uh, you said that you were going to be putting your hat into the ring. In other words, running for, <clears throat> pardon me, DA. Do you still plan to do that? Well, you know, Marley, you caught me off guard that night. I didn't plan any announcement when I was <laughs> on your show. But in fact, the recall had concluded its work. The signatures had been submitted. And, and I'm not a politician. I'm a prosecutor and I'm a regular guy. So at that point, I knew that I was going to make a run for DA if this recall was successful. And so I said it. Uh, it, it didn't turn out the way that I had hoped it would. And many other people uh, would have, have had it. But um, you know, 2024 is in front of us. All options are on the table. Uh, I'm not going anywhere. I think it's premature to, to announce anything 
uh, about 2024 tonight, um, but certainly I will remain engaged. Okay, very good. Uh, Deputy DA John McKenney, thank you so much for your time tonight. Can I say one other thing, Marlon? Go ahead. You know, I know the people who are disappointed by this outcome, let that disappointment wash over you. And when you wake up tomorrow, just know we're one day closer to the future, to 2024, and we'll get there together. Okay. Uh, is there going to be a third attempt at a recall? Let me get that last question in. I don't think so. I can't speak for, you know, the recall committee that just tried uh, this time around or any other person who might want to try. But I, I just think the timing doesn't make sense at this point. Okay. I think uh, we, we just have to go forward and keep an eye on this DA and keep the pressure on him. All right, John McKinney, thank you. We appreciate you.